the owner of Cheetah Plains, Yapi Fanika, has taken his time making this Sabi Sands destination a benchmark in upscale eco safaris and sustainability. Yapi, are we going to make it to the lodge? I mean, it sounds like the engine's dying. I can't hear it at all. I've been on a lot of drives and they're usually very noisy. I've also been on a lot of drives and each and every one irritated me. Once we stop at a sighting and you just want to move a meter forward, you have to start the car again and then the starter goes and then everything <laughs> jumps up and the figure looks at you and we want to get rid of it. And the only way to do it is go electric, but that's the right thing to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so not only is the, the game vehicle electric and off the grid, but judging by these huge solar panels that greet you when you arrive, this is definitely not your average safari lodge. From the beginning we wanted to go off the grid, therefore we had to find the best technology that is available now. We installed these panels that follow the sun the whole day to get optimal usage of the sun and there was no compromise here. We had to go green and we had to make it work. I was actually very privileged to be part of this amazing project to see Yarpi's dream actually unfold into this reality and also the architect, Stefan Anthony, and his team, John and uh, Nina, they were just incredible. The attention to detail is really making this five-star experience. Yapi, are you quite a fan of industrial? Because I can see lots of steel, lots of stone. It's a contemporary design, the most incredible architecture, the raw steel, the raw stone, three houses in God's nature. One of the ways we achieved this was by using this beautiful mica rock. We wanted the walls to be authentic and real, and that's exactly what they turned out as. The Domex, uh, which is a steel material, which actually allows itself to rust, and the aesthetic value, obviously, is that it really has such an incredible presence of these beautiful suites. So I'd love to show you around. Bye-bye. Enjoy, Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Bye. Enjoy it. Bye. 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 Every house needs a dramatic entrance, and uh, we created that by, obviously, this beautiful entrance pergola. Working as creative associate with John Case has been interior designer Nina Sierra Rubia. On arrival, you've got this fantastic, huge bronze beaten mirror. It's a basically a contemporary interpretation of like an African shield. Everything has such an ethnic feel because there's the shield, but there's also the sculpture. It's so beautiful. Most of the stuff in here has been custom made or commissioned, um, and there's a, a great collection and great collaboration of South African artists and designers that we'd love to show you more. Mm -hmm. Cool. So one of my favorite things about this house is this clear line of sight from the front door all the way to the water hole at the front. I love that you have the entire wilderness in front of you, but you can also catch a rugby game on that massive TV. <laughs> yeah, look, it added to the, the, the idea of having a home in the bush. Um, so it would be nice to have a place that you could break away to watch the game or the kids can just sort of vacate to a space where they feel totally private as well. And for the kids, of course, you need a super deep, ultra comfortable sofa, which we had custom designed. We've got this incredible podium-like coffee table just made from Mingot Hoat that displays Yapi's beautiful art book collection. And just over there, like a nice twist on the whole safari bushfire vibe, you've got the beach over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yapi obviously loved the work that we did on the Atlantic seaboard, and he said to us, and you know, tongue in cheek, he said that you know he'd love the Atlantic seaboard in the bush. So you can see some of it arrived here on side. <laughs> So I think the first thing you notice about the architecture here is that there are these really expansive open spaces. So you'll notice that the beams actually fly right through the building. And at the same time, we have these incredible fly-through concrete walls, which are actually a big signature in the actual overall architectural aesthetic. Being playing with scale and weight is the bar is carved out of one solid block of silver grey travertine. Contrasted against this dimpled bar unit, we've got this amazing feature light which we had custom made with Martin Dollar and David Reed. It was inspired by the Tomburti trees which are indigenous to this area. Below that we did a custom Pierre Crenier dining table uh, made from solid lead wood. It's the only timber that will actually sink. That's how heavy it is. It's amazing how all these industrial raw materials like concrete and kind of rusted steel have become so luxurious nowadays. It's the kind of luxury that we call sort of barefoot luxury, which really allows you to kind of be almost primal, but in an incredibly comfortable armchair. One thing we did want to do was bring a lot of the external materials indoors as well. I love how close the pool is to the water. It's almost like you're swimming with the hippos. 
We really wanted the pool to kind of have this sort of infinity feel. And the most important part of that was actually surrounding it by this incredible sculptural architectural canopy. One thing you'll notice about the, the tree canopy is that it has these really beautiful laser cut um, apertures which allow sunlight through which create really dynamic shadows on the floor. For each of the houses, we specially commissioned R&D Love to create these beautiful uh, cheetah sculptures. If you have a look over here, you'll see this one running into the horizon. It's quite dynamic and spectacular. You know what this whole place reminds me of? is one of those little James Bond getaways. You know, it's like unassuming from the outside. There's solar panels and you can't see anything. But then you walk inside and it's like pure luxury. Yeah. He's an oversized child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, anything James Bond, man, I love it. <laughs> While modern in style, the earthy, natural textures and tones of the three designer bush homes blend into the Sabi Bushveld and feel like part of the landscape. So welcome to the guest suite, guys. Oh man, look at this. Um, you know, we really wanted the, the facades of the suite to be quite monolithic. Um, and almost ruin-like, you know, these lovely, like, sort of really individual, strong elements. And then as you enter the room, it really opens up to the view. So in terms of the decor, we contrasted beautiful raw leathers against the concrete backdrop of the bed, paired with beautiful hand-blown custom lights made with Martin Dollar. In the lounge, we've got custom sofa with beautiful granite side table that's been integrated. Yeah, very inviting space overall. The really cool thing about this is though, technically it's a room to a house that you're renting for the weekend or whatever it is, but they could be self-contained suites. Correct. Part of the brief really was that you could escape from the crowd, really just enjoy Africa. You can actually open this up and step right into it. The idea is really to kind of extend the rooms outside and, you know, by having this sort of blurred line between inside and outside, it really allows us to, you know, really bring nature indoors. We really don't need to leave the room, man. Bro. This is unbelievable. Well, wait, guys, you still haven't seen the bathroom and dressing room yet. Let me show you. Come on over here. <laughs> outside shower, baby. Dude. So guys, let me show you the ultimate bathroom. The idea here really was to, to have the doors slide right past the facade so that the bath could be totally open to the view. At the same time, it really just gives you this incredibly luxurious feel. You know, a lot of safaris claim to be luxury safaris, lodges, but this is like another level of luxury, all of this. I think the idea really was having nature absolutely to yourself. And uh, enough about that, you guys actually need to go out and check it out for yourselves. You go to your room. <laughs> get, get away from my bathroom. Each of these bush homes includes a private safari vehicle and designated field guide, like Sips Maswangani. All right, so Ben, I'll be walking in front of you. Come behind me in a single file and Sam will be behind. All right, so we got these elephants just right over there. We're about 50 meters away. Okay, the wind is blowing towards us. Normally we'll not mind if they don't smell us. So if the wind changes direction, then it's time to run. I know, no, we don't have to run. I think, uh, I think they're fine. Then they still relaxed, feeding on the marula tree that they just dropped. And we're gonna keep moving forward and see what they do. Cool. And this is why I love Africa, because you can get up close and personal with wild animals like this. You can almost touch them. Okay. Beautiful. This is Africa. Beautiful. Our electric ride went almost unnoticed. All right, folks, so I've got lions lying behind us, three females from the Tortured Pride. At the moment, they're just resting. I can see they've got full bellies, so they might have eaten something last night. Well, I'm so happy we see my two favorites, elephant and lion. Bro, I'm just happy we saw lions. <laughs> yeah. Each bush home boasts a wine cellar of its own, and Reginald Pete's wine tastings are a highlight for guests. You've got such a beautiful wine cellar here. I must admit, this is a lovely setup. I know very little about wine. Um, we're having Springbok tonight. I know you've prepared your favorites for what you think will go best with our meal. Why have you chosen these wines for tonight? If you see, I've got the Pinot Tache. It has that uh, sublime character that will, you know, plunge well or bode well with your Springbok. Next one. I wouldn't let you go out of the cellar without trying the Rubicon. It's five grapes on it and it's 2015 vintage, one of the best vintage they've ever had. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's very, uh, very rich. Yeah. That one. There's a lot going on there. Yes. <laughs> and this is very interesting because you've selected a white wine here, which is going to dispel a lot of myths about having to have white wine with seafood and red meat with red wine. It's an old belief, old world style winemaking. We are new world. South Africa is a new world, so we we breaking rules. You won't really find this on the shelf in South Africa. It is the wines that are made for boutique uh, produce, and they've got small batches. And I'm telling you, it's a zippy wine. It, mm -hmm. This makes it. It buries down each and every million front of you. 
I like it. Yeah. Very nice, very refreshing. Yeah. I think we must go with the white. Wonderful. I like that. I like mixing it up a bit like that. Yeah. Ideal for dinner by head chef Charlene Lee for Shear. Looking at all these ingredients, it looks like we're going to be putting together the mains. Yes, uh, I've got my caramelized baby carrots, seared asparagus, dehydrated onion, baby fennel and frosted baby pea shoots. First of all, we need to grill the spring milk fillet. How long do we usually put this on for? Roughly four minutes to cook it perfectly medium and it's ready to plate. Finally, my drying skills are coming to good use. This is going to be perfect. I always like that like, the plating seems to make the food so much more animated because of all the colours. It's so beautiful. See this as your paintbrush and the plate as your canvas. That's why they call chefs artists. There you go. Beautiful. Well done. Stop it. <laughs> Fresh fish made of fine hors d'oeuvre. Ooh, you're going to like this. This is the salmon starter. Mm-hmm. Mm. Salmon is fresh. Mm. Delicious. I'm loving these combinations. You're going to be nice. blown away by these, man. Okay, what we got? Looks Thank good. you. What do you think? Good job. Yeah. I'm impressed, bro. Huh. It's a nice zippy wine to go with our red meat. Something unexpected. Wow. This goes so well with the springbok and the sauteed oh, bread. Perfect combination. Unexpected. I called it Joburg because it's like the, it's got the personality but not the looks of Cape Town. Other wines have the looks and they're like the reputation. Joburg's the underdog that always wins, right? Dessert was deconstructed peppermint tart. Mm. Amazing. Dude, these getaways just keep getting better and better and better. Maybe next time we'll go to the moon. I like it. Or Mars on a space safari with Elon Musk.